the Pontiac Firebird, the Saturn View, the Saab 93 sedan, and Hummer. These iconic brands all have something in common. They are casualties of the 2009 Chapter 11 reorganization bankruptcy of General Motors, which Forbes magazine called the most important bankruptcy in U.S. history. Before diving into the how and why of bankruptcy, let's talk about General Motors as a business. General Motors produces, sells, repairs, and rents cars, vans, SUVs, and trucks. Founded in Michigan in 1908, GM owns and operates several assembly plants worldwide and retails its vehicles through nearly 6,000 dealerships and 14,000 other distributors globally. In the year 2000, General Motors was worth an estimated $56 billion and held the title of number one automaker in the world. By the time Toyota took over that number one car maker in the world title, things looked different for GM. Sales across the industry dropped to 37% thanks to rising fuel prices and shrinking wages. GM suffered more than the average, however, with sales dropping 45%. By the time it filed for bankruptcy in June 2009, General Motors had lost over $50 billion in market capitalization and acquired $54 billion of debt. GM's troubles began after the virus attacks when it initiated a cycle of price incentives to address a sales slump. Rebates and 0% financing forced higher sticker prices, which reduced sales and undercut profits. GM had a large financial commitment in the form of pensions and health benefits to a growing population of retirees exiting the workforce in the mid-2000s. At the same time, GM abandoned its electric vehicle division, losing its investment and in ceding that market to Toyota's Prius. The final nail in GM's coffin was overcommitment to the production of trucks as gas prices soared in 2007 and 2008. Unable to recover despite billions of dollars of U.S. government bailouts, a special kind of Chapter 11 bankruptcy was chosen over a more lengthy standard bankruptcy. Two companies emerged from GM's bankruptcy, Old GM and New GM. Old GM took unprofitable divisions and production plants to the tune of $173 billion in liabilities with only $82 billion in assets. New GM, which had only $16 billion in debt and other liabilities, and $136 billion. The most profitable divisions in the company reduced retiree benefit burden. The U.S. Treasury bought the essentially worthless shares of old GM and helped fund new GM. This unusual arrangement was at the time the largest industrial bankruptcy in American history. New GM has recovered to pre-bankruptcy sales and revenue levels, and is on track with paying its debt obligations to the American taxpayers.